person may uh, prefer to consider uh, informal sector as any kind of engagement, any kind of activity which is uh, outside of the formal sector. Just the formal sector is regulated and governed by that of government policies or by the state. And something which is considered to be outside that sector is uh, typically considered as informal sector. Now, uh, for the purpose of this study, just the informal economy is uh, considered as any activity involving uh, production and distribution of goods and services with without a direct state regulation, without direct state regulation, and some of them may employ family labor in addition to that of their own. And typically, for most parts, they are unregistered and may be considered to be illegal. But uh, when we say illegal, typically. Uh, uh, I'm not referring to that of they might be illegal, okay, because they may use uh, zones which may not be asset provided for them to carry out their business, but they are not illegitimate in the eyes of society. You can uh, consider uh, criminal activity like uh, drug selling. So, drug selling typically uh, is not uh, considered here as informal sector. So, any criminal activities related with that. And uh, still, this sector, typically it is a viable and dynamic part of national and local uh, economy. The methodology, just, uh, first I try to identify uh, four subsectors of the informal economy or the informal sector. Uh, so these are typically selected based on the considerations of most of the time. Most of the time, just women entrepreneurs are engaged uh, in such activities. Uh, one is uh, cook to food selling or vegetable and fruit selling. The other one is uh, tailoring and embroidery. And the other groups that uh, the other groups that I considered was uh, hair dressing and finally pet trade of uh, commodities. So these are these groups typically included uh, in the study. Now.